The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in the podcast belong solely to the hosts and not the hosts' past, present, or future employers. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Brian from Breaking Down Security. I'm actually streaming this at the same time, so the people who are actually lurking uh, are asking me, you know, probably wondering why I'm, I'm doing an intro here. But um, <clears throat> so I'm uh, I'm doing a uh, a stream. Mr. Betcher, Miss Berlin are not here with me. This is a lovely Friday afternoon, and uh, you know I'm I'm you know chatting with some of my people in my my stream chat here. So uh, you know if you are on a podcast uh, listener and you want to come and join me. Uh, on on the Twitch stream, you can you know sign up and follow uh, on uh, on Twitch, uh, you know, and or subscribe if you'd like. I appreciate that if you can. Um, but you know, uh, you know, just wanted to put out some news this week. There's been a lot going on. Uh, for those of you who haven't been uh, haven't been looking, um, one of the things that uh, you know I think we talked about earlier this week was the uh, the the breach uh, that uh, that bleeping computer had announced and then all of a sudden uh was kind of much ado about nothing i believe it was td bank uh they had ran a story about a breach that had occurred and then uh the story had come out that uh from other groups who were writing stories about the td bank article on bleeping computer which is kind of funny because it was kind of a you know news about a news story about a news story uh so i i i should know that that was a thing that occurs where people will write news stories about news stories from other news sites, but it, it happened. But apparently it was, uh, they said it was an insider threat issue. Uh, it wasn't nearly as big as it was initially reported, uh, because they didn't have numbers at the time. I think they were just trying to get it out on, on the webs as much as possible, but it got, uh, pulled fairly quickly. And so, um, I think that's a, a nice, uh, lesson to ourselves to, you know, not just, uh, um, uh, you know, take things as at, at stock value, you know, just because there was an insider thread doesn't necessarily mean they were completely owned. Um, the way they made it sound, it was about four or five people, not four or 5,000 or four or 5 million people. It was like four or five people. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, we'll, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting to to see something like that actually turn out to be a nothing burger. It's like super nothing burger. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm glad to see that we could, you know, maybe get through the week without one, you know, or more major issues uh, in, in terms of uh, breach. Uh, we are on a Friday and it is, depending on where you work, maybe a three day holiday if you are uh, celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day or, um, you know, uh, the, the guy who supposedly founded America, but didn't, uh, and, you know, did a bunch of horrible things. So uh, I don't get it off, but, uh, you know, other, other folks do. So, uh, congratulations if you're in America, the U S and have a three day weekend. So, um, let me see. Oh, I saw, <laughs> I saw this. So, uh, there's a news article to the register. Uh, there was a Binance hack. Binance is a cryptocurrency exchange and, uh, there we go. I'm posting that in uh, the link to the notes. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, they halted. Uh, so the cryptocurrency exchange Binance temporarily halted uh, blockchain network on Thursday. So their entire blockchain network in response to a cyber attack that led to the theft of two million uh, Binance tokens notationally exchangeable for five hundred sixty six million dollars in fiat currency. Um so, yeah, there was uh, they said so according to article in uh, on the register, they say there was an exploit affecting the native cross chain bridge between BNB Beacon Chain, BEP2 and BNB Smart Chain, BEP20 or BSC known as the BSC Token Hub. A total of two million BNB was withdrawn. The exploit was through a. Uh, they use the S word, folks. Uh, sophisticated forging of the low level proof in one into one common library. So they were able to um, show a proof uh, in one common library, I guess, between the both of them that was maybe synchronized between the two. Um, <clears throat> and so they, they mentioned in a blog post. Let's see what the 
open up the blog post here for the bnbchain.org. So they have an update as of 7 October. Oh, here we go. Ah, Lady P, our moderator. They were able to show a proof while holding their pinky finger out. Ah, okay. So um, the, the proof may not have been legit, but they were able to um, impersonate or or show a, a, a proof, even though it was an actual proof. So <laughs> don't use. No, we don't use the S word around here, Lady P. You know that. Um, so, oh, well, the first line in the uh, in the in the blog post says update. First, we want to apologize to the community for the exploit that occurred. We own this. OK. Uh, decentralized chains are not designed to be stopped, but by contacting community validators one by one, we were able to stop the incident from spreading. It is not that easy as the smart chain has 26 active validators at present and 44 in total across different time zones. Does that mean they're coughing up 600 million out of their own piggy bank? I don't know, Lady P, but uh, um, yeah, uh, Lady P is asking the question. Does that mean they're going to, you know, cover the 600 million dollars that was lost? You know. So, OK, so here's a, here's an interesting question about that. When we lose money in the bank, we have government regulators and controls in place. The FDIC ensures, uh, you know, amounts up to, I believe it's quarter million dollars now in the United States. Um, the, the interesting thing is I don't think the blockchain or any of the cryptocurrencies have those kinds of guarantees. So my guess, uh, lady P and I'm not, you know, I don't know, but I'm guessing those people are going to be asked out or, I mean, the right thing that the BNB chain folks should say is yes, we're going to give the money back. Um, they say, thanks to the assistance of all security experts, projects, and validators, the vast majority of the funds remain under control. So even if the $600 billion did happen, uh, they, the majority of the funds remain under control. So it may not be a full $600 million there, uh, Lady P. Um, some money may have gotten away, but some may just be sitting in another crypto account somewhere. And it sounds like they may know where some of that data, uh, that information is. So they say... Um, there will be on-chain governance votes to determine the following actions for the common good of BNB. What to do with the hacked funds, freeze or not to freeze. That seems fairly obvious to me. You'd want to freeze them so they couldn't be you know, used. Whether or not to use BNB auto burn to cover the remaining hacked funds or not. Okay, so uh, freeze the funds uh, and also to you know, whether we should uh, cover the hacked funds. Uh, white hat program for future bugs found one million for each significant bug found. So they, it's interesting. They, they're going to give fiat currency for a cryptocurrency system. Uh, and they're calling it a white hat program, which means they don't know what a bug bounty program is. <clears throat> and number four, a bounty for catching hackers up to 10% of the recovered funds. So instead of a bug bounty program, they want a bounty on hackers up to 10% of the recovered funds. That's interesting. So that would mean, <clears throat> it sounds like, with number four, that you can do some forensics on the blockchain, which I'm sure that this is very, um, very apropos, uh, and you can actually catch what accounts are available. Um, I guess the idea of the blockchain being it tracks every transaction, there's a log of the transaction inside the system itself, so you should be able to um, find that information and, and backtrack to those places. Um, what is going on in our chat? So Discord chat is going off right now. I thought you were up and then back down, back up. Oh, um, yeah, so, so one sec. So yes, I was because I suck <clears throat> at changing... Uh, status on the streams. So the, those of you listening on the podcast, um, before I go live, there's a few things that I'm supposed to do, which I probably should write down and go make a checkbox, make a checkbox, you know, compliance measures. Uh, changing the stream elements announcement uh, stream information is one thing that I tend to forget to do until I'm already waiting to start the stream. And then um, I realize that I haven't changed it in a couple weeks or use the wrong month on several of the streams. 
uh, when it should have been September, I was putting August. Um, so yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, but I'm streaming right now. <clears throat> Actually doing a podcast at the same time. A podcast at the same time. There we go. So, yeah, it seems to me that they what they want to do is have a vote on whether or not to freeze the funds, whether or not to cover any funds that are missing uh, a bug bounty program and a hacker bounty program, uh, which is kind of funny. Um, <clears throat> hey, Beta Wolf, what's going on? Uh, Beta Wolf, also one of the fine people that joined uh, me uh, at CSEC East uh, this uh, last Wednesday. Um, for those of you listening to the podcast who didn't catch the stream uh, earlier before I started recording, uh, I am uh, divesting myself from the Seattle based properties uh, or communities that I have been nurturing and or building in the past uh, eight years up here because I'm moving to San Diego. So I've st stepped down and divested myself from the CSEC meetup uh, and we'll probably keep doing CSEC East until around maybe April time frame. Uh, and then step down from that with the idea that, you know, the couple months left here at, at, in Seattle is going to be kind of a, you know, uh, a, a massive hodgepodge of things to do. So um, if any of you are in the Seattle area and um, are interested in maybe taking over a slightly dented uh, meetup group of, uh, you know, like minded individuals, uh, you know, contact me uh, at BreakSec on Twitter, uh, at Brian Break on Twitter. And uh, yeah, yeah, just let me know. <clears throat> so they yeah so um i i don't necessarily agree with number four i think if you could you know maybe the the catching the hackers would be like catching their wallet potentially if you can figure out where the stolen blockchain is in what accounts uh if you can do that though i would say why are you not hiring people that can do that for you like incident response folks um <laughs> so beta wolf uh responds uh, this bad boy is a 1985 Honda Civic. Don't mind the big dent in the side. It's one hell of a deal. Yeah, um, it, it's not it's not dented in a bad way. It's, uh, you know, I'd love to to have folks who would be willing to, you know, do more with it. I know we did quite a bit in the uh, during the pandemic with like virtual meetups. Uh, we have we had speakers. We had partnerships with Black Lodge. And, you know, unfortunately, we haven't been able to to get back into the in-person stuff as much as I would like to. Uh, so maybe that'll maybe that'll happen now that we've got Omicron boosters. And this is going to be feels more like a yearly event where we're going to be getting like our seasonal flu vaccines. We're going to get our somewhat seasonal, you know, covid vaccines and we'll be able to do more things in, in the meat space. So, um, yeah. Um. <clears throat> So, yeah, to, to finish up the, the blockchain uh, thing, they said last we owe a debt of gratitude to the community for moving so quickly to minimize what could have been a more serious incident. Uh, we're sorry for any inconvenience, the suspension of the smart chain cause, but we're truly grateful to the community for their support. So, you know, they crowd, they're crowdsourcing their crypto, but apparently enough people cared to report that, which is great. Um, I think it's, oh, Hawks fam. Hello. Wasn't there a couple of other cryptos that did number four, offered the hacker money to get stolen crypto? Uh, Hawks fam, I'm, I, I think, well, I guess, I guess it could have be read that way as well. Um, uh, uh, it says a bounty for catching the hackers. I'm thinking if I'm the hacker, are they going to give me a, a bounty for catching myself? Um, not, 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 not sure, but if it was really 60, $600 million worth of, of cryptocurrency, 10%, that's 60 million crypto. I'm not hating that, you know, as a, as a person, if I could do some blockchain forensics, that would be kind of kind of sweet and figure out, hey, the crypto money's in this wallet and, you know, give me my monies. They say up to 10 percent. So, you know, six hundred million dollars, 60 million. Maybe they won't give you 60 million, but maybe they'll give you, I don't know, 20 million. You know, I would I would hope they're not like, well, you know, one tenth of one percent is going to be what you're going to get. Um, But, yeah, I mean. One million dollars for a significant bug. You know, if you're if you're into bug bounties, that may not be shabby either. So uh, Beta Wolf says I'd hit up a friend and ask them to go to jail for me for a bit while I have a nice bank account waiting for them to get out. Whew, man, you've got to know some real friends who want to go to, you know, jail for you just for a nice bank account. I, yeah. 
I don't know, Beta Wolf. I, I, I don't know if there's any amount of money. I mean, yeah, you get three hots in a cot, but, uh, you know, I've seen Orange is the New Black, and it's, you know, it's not what, wait, that one, that one probably wouldn't apply to me. I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, Beta, you know, it's nice to tell somebody, yeah, you got 20 million waiting for you when you get out, but I mean, what if like eight years from now, you know? Um, how much are we talking and how long? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, if it's, you know, if it's not in the U S maybe it would be, you know, a couple of months or something, but you know, the, the U S doesn't, I don't want to say they don't know how to sentence people properly, but, uh, we tend to, yeah. Well, you know, if you put it all in speculative stock or something like that, you know, God forbid you had it in Ethereum in 2019. Now your, your Ethereum's worth, you know, nothing. So, um, Oh, Hawks Hawks fam's got a link to the B, to the BBC. Let me see what's going on here. Crypto uh, hacker offered reward after 600 million heist. Uh yeah, the Poly network. Okay, yeah, I think I read something about this one as well, Hawks fam. Uh the hacker who stole 600 million was offered half a million and immunity as a reward for turning the money. That's hmm You know, I have to I have to wonder that risk reward. I mean, 600 million, you could keep 600 million and be on the run from the law, which, you know, that's a lot of yachts and a lot of Lambos and, you know, hodl, hodl, hodl and whatever's. Um, Is that what is Beta Wolf? uh, I can't imagine what the next Oceans series of movies is going to be like. It's just going to be a bunch of hackers sitting around a table. You hear I got it. I'm done. You know, that kind of thing. Was it going to be two hours of just, you know, click clackety clack on time? Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, exactly. Lady P. Um, It's interesting, you know, half a million in immunity. I can still do a lot with half a million dollars and complete immunity from uh, law enforcement. I don't know if law enforcement would see it that way, though. I think law enforcement would be like, you know, they'd, they'd still want to do something from that person. I mean, un- unless Polly just doesn't press charges, but there may not be an offer for them to not press charges. So uh, one, f- yeah. See one former FBI official said private companies have no authority to promise immunity from criminal prosecution. So, you know, I could get my half million dollars, but I could still be on the run from the law. So, you know, um, lady B lady P says half a million. That's like two buckets of chicken. at gives <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know that <laughs> family size buckets were that expensive these days. I haven't been to KFC in a, in about a decade. So uh, Beta says, "Well, wait, wait. You, you've heard of the case where the crypto lost all their money because a hacker voted on the blockchain would be the new owner of said crypto." Yeah, what if it was one of the validators or dinner? I mean, we don't actually know. They didn't actually say who did did the dirty deed. Um, so, yeah, <clears throat> uh, it, it's interesting. I, you know, the, the one thing I don't get about the, the crypto industry or the crypto community is how they generate their trust, you know, and that's that's one thing that's always kind of bothered me about trust anyway. It's like it's given so freely in some communities without actually thinking about, ah, well, what what's bad that could happen here? <clears throat> the validation was done within Discord. Oh, well, Beta Wolf. That's yeah, that's that's perfect. Great, great. Uh, Hawks fam says with China cracking down on miners, etc. Wonder where most voting on the blockchain is centered now. Would that be in the U.S. there, Hawks fam? I'm not exactly sure. Beta Wolf says and no one voted against him the second time he did it. And it was just like millions of dollars gone. Yeah, I mean, it would have you'd have to know who actually was doing it. Um, uh, Beta Wolf, I'd imagine uh, if if it was one of the validators who was doing it. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> so poly network appears to have accepted the explanation and dubbed the hacker, Mr. White hat. Um, so apparently did he give, did this person give the money back? Hacker still holds 33 million of stolen tether tokens. This was, uh, as of what, what, uh, oh, this was uh 31 August or 13 August last year. So 13 August, 2021, the hacker still holds 33 million in stolen tether uh, was there any updates to this? I wonder do they. Okay. So they gave back 600 million and all but 33 million. That's 2%, 2%, no 5%, roughly 
<clears throat> wherever the kilowatts cheapest, I bet. Well, you know, Hawks fam, uh, for a while, um, at least up here in Washington state, the Lake Chelan area was fairly cheap electricity uh, because of the Grand Coulee Dam, which is uh, in, we call it, we call it central. It's probably eastern Washington, but it's it's more central than anything else. But um, I, I believe the electricity was super cheap in that area, and they had a lot of Bitcoin farmers. Uh, Texas also has a lot of Bitcoin farmers when uh, the you know temperatures were like 110 down there. Um, I, I do remember us talking about the the Bitcoin farmers turning off their farms down there, and that was like one percent of the total output of of Texas at the time. So, oh yeah, Iceland is another one. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Iceland is you know geothermal energy. You know, um, the funny thing. So Hawks fam, one one of the things I found out when I was in Iceland is that ice uh, electricity in Iceland is not cheap. Because Iceland, for whatever reason, exports their electricity to other countries. So I'm I'm not exactly sure how they're doing, you know, Bitcoin mining there when the electricity is like super expensive. Um, the the tour guides that I was talking to when I was in Iceland, um, you know, they were like, oh, you think with all this geothermal energy we have, it would be cheap. And they're like, no, we export all of our electricity. And I was like, holy shit. OK. Um, you know, you ever want, you know, you should be taking care of y'all selves first before trying to supply Europe with a ton of uh, electricity, but they do that. So, um, maybe once I get my solar panels up, I will be able to set up, you know, some, some lovely, you know, uh, Dogecoin or something like that. Maybe I can get my money back from my Dogecoin. Uh, Bitcoin farmer applied to Walla Walla. It was turned down as they did not trust the Bitcoin company. Oh, okay. Hey, CPO Parker, what's up? Thank you again for, for coming to CSEC East, uh, CPO. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, now we're getting more of the Verge article here. Beanstalk cryptocurrency hack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wow, Be yeah. Beanstalk cryptocurrency project robbed after hacker votes to send him themselves $182 million. Whew. Yeah, I... It's it's hard. It's 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 hard to I, I don't understand the trust here. It's like it's a cryptocurrency. You know, everybody should just blindly trust it. It's, it's just one of those things through discord. Oh, OK. Like many other DeFi projects. Yes, the attack was made possible call uh, by another product called a flash loan allows users to borrow large amounts of cryptocurrency for very short periods of time, minutes or seconds. Flash loans are meant to provide liquidity or take advantage of price arbitrage opportunities but can also be used for more nefarious purposes. Yeah, see, this requires people with like the deep, the deep magic knowledge of cryptocurrency to be able to understand, well, you know, I can just, you know, take out a loan for $10 billion and then, you know, do speculation immediately and then sell it back for, you know, $11 billion and still pocket the billion or something like that. It's just crazy. It's just just nuts. And you and it I don't yeah, I just don't know why people are shocked when they get taken for a ride on these things. It's like you don't get you you don't you don't think about the trust issues. You just assume that everybody's in this in the same, you know, bucket as you. So uh Lady P says if you want to stand alone from the government issued currency, then you should expect to bear the risk yourself. Yeah, see I think so, Lady P, I think I, just, I, I think some people in the crypto region just assume that everybody trusts everybody and they're not going to do anything evil. I mean, if you don't have people like hackers who are stealing the crypto through a bridge or the token hub, like we were talking about earlier, you've got people who are just making off with the money in the blockchain or worse, you've got the people who are creating the exchanges and then, you know, just tearing it all down pulling the money out of all the bank accounts and then retiring to the Crimea, uh, on their yacht. Um, uh, yeah, you know, beta, all those promises about it being decentralized and, you know, uh, away from government banks and not being able to be traced. None of that came true. It's yeah. Hating people is a learned behavior. Lady P says they won't make that mistake again. Welcome to my world. You know, I think people who do a lot of cryptocurrency don't have don't have the luxury of not blindly trusting that they're going to turn their money into things. 
Um, I mean, they're already pot committed, right? They can't, you know, all those people that have bought a ton of Ethereum at 20, you know, uh, $3,000, $4,000 thinking, well, it's going to shoot up like Bitcoin did. And now it's worth what? I don't know how much Ethereum is now worth. They just changed over to a proof of uh, Ethereum prices. Yeah, it's like $1,300. I mean, I have like $500 worth of Ethereum. I bought it like $2,500. I don't expect to ever get that money back. It's it's gone. Um, but yeah, I think some of these folks that are pot committed, they can't get out without losing their ass. I mean, my my, I think my my five hundred dollars worth of Ethereum that I have sitting in a PayPal account is worth like a hundred bucks now. So, um, oh yeah, Hawks fam's got another link here about CoinDesk. I don't know how we got on a Bitcoin thing. Um, I do remember the, the, the $600 million thing. So I don't know how we got on the, the blockchain stuff. It's, it's easy to, you know, point and say, ha ha, these folks. But what's sad is there's people who've like mortgaged their houses thinking Bitcoin was going to be worth something. Look at this. Bitcoin is at $20,000 under $20,000, and a half thousand us. That's, I mean, it was seventy thousand dollars at one time. Somebody who bought it forty, like forty thousand, thinking, "Well, you know, I'm going to keep it." Oh, it's seventy thousand now. I made twice my money. Now they're like half their money. I just, they it just it, crazy, crazy. I lost my butt in the dot bomb. Lady P says, "Uh, yeah, I um, <clears throat> I'm waiting for the magic time when Elon, you know, buys Twitter at fifty four twenty, and I've taken my." 300 my my tiny 300 shares of twitter stock that i bought when i was um you know working through all that and uh, you know i pocket a nice ten thousand dollars you know um uh it's it's gonna happen so yeah no i yeah i figured lady p the dot-com crash yeah i mean you know everyone had everyone had stock in you know things like yahoo and and whatever so Hawks fam says, sorry, it's implementation of the underlying code that I believe is the issue, not a doctor. So I don't trust. Uh, yeah. 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 <clears throat> you know, a, a lot of these companies, especially the crypto ones, it's very attractive. It's very sexy. It's very in. It's very new. It's hip. Um, and I'm actually trying to get involved with some of the local tech startups in the San Diego area. Um, simply because I would love to pick their brain about security or, or the lack of, you know, historically as a security folks, um, we assume that it's a startup first to market, et cetera, et cetera. I'd love to pick some of these folks brains about why don't they think about security or, um, you know, not, not, and and I know I'm going to get some, I know I'm going to get some answers in chat about, you know, well, first to market, first to market, um, I think maybe some of them don't really think about that. And it's like the crypto stuff, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to throw out this crypto coin and I'm going to do all this stuff. And, you know, I'm going to build this technology behind it to be able to trade these things. Never thinking about, well, somebody might actually want to be mean to me or my my organization or my application and and do me harm. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, Bloodbound. Uh, we, we've got we've got quite a few uh, followers uh, in our in our chat right now. So um, uh, <clears throat> Lady P says, here's the rule. If your Uber driver is telling you about their amazing investment, it's time to get out of it. Oh, out of get out of it, like out of the car or out of the investment. Is it Lady P? Is that what you're trying to say? Get out of the car. <laughs> Thank you, CPO. Uh, oh, out of the investment. OK, I was like, yeah, if you're if you're. If your Uber, if your Uber and person's telling you about their startup, time to get out. You know, just open the car door on the interstate and just you know roll when you hit the hit the pavement. So that, you know, there you go. Yeah, roll, tuck and roll, so that way you know do 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 do. Um, but yeah, I would love to talk to this to to some of the startup you know folks in San Diego. 
Uh, they do regular coffee sessions there, both virtually and in person. So, you know, when I get down there, I'm, I'm actually trying to see if they'll do if they're going to do like any Friday stuff while I'm down there in San Diego. I'm going to be down there the 20th through the 24th for uh, B-Side San Diego. And I'm looking to uh, see if I can uh, join them for that. So uh, selling your coins out of the investment. It's already too late. Well, you know. Lady P, maybe, may, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, I, I know NFL football players who, you know, undrafted, they go, you know, they're, they're waiting for their chance to, to get there. Maybe the startups are very, very similar. You got a guy, person, you know, they, their, their rags to riches story was I was, you know, a Lyft driver and now I'm making, you know, billions of dollars and, you know, I'm, I've got, you know, Lambos and, and yachts and helicopters and, spaceships taking me to the moon and stuff you know eventually that's going to be a thing right so <clears throat> but anyway so crypto cryptos being crypto and people will continue to take it and new things will pop up and old things will go away and um it's it's just kind of interesting oh yeah there's my lo-fi chill um <clears throat> so yeah binance was was robbed but it sounds like they know where the money is and they're going to get it back which is actually great uh from a response point of view Binance knows what wallets some or all of the money is in. Um, so they're they're minimizing the damage from an incident response point of view. And now they're. I, I don't know if that's something they normally do where they reach out to all of the the security or the 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 controllers of the group, the 46 that they had mentioned or the 40 odd people to say, hey, what do we do about this? Um, do we vote them off the island uh, where they can't do anything? Do we just yank the money out? Uh, of their their wallet, which would lead to potential other trust issues in the future. If if Binance has the ability to just yank money out of your wallet at any time, regardless, without your authorization, that causes me some heartburn. If I had a Binance account like I do at that place, um, I mean, they can have all the Dogecoin they want because I think that's all I have in my Binance account, which, of course, I'm never going to get that money back. But um. <clears throat> yeah, Bloodbound, uh, the, the article that we had talked about said that they were um, working on four options in this case. Uh, they wanted to know whether or not they should freeze or not freeze the money in those wallets. Um, they also talked about uh, crap. Uh, let's see, there was it was a specific blog post that they had mentioned uh, those four items, <clears throat> uh, whether to use auto burn to cover the remaining hacked funds or not. So. They know where the money is and which wallets it's in, it sounds like, for number one. They want to know if you know, whatever remainder is not covered in those wallets. Hey, thanks, Hawks fam. Appreciate that. Thank you so much for the, the bits. Appreciate you, sir. Uh, or person. Sorry, person. Don't know your pronouns. I apologize for that. Um, they want to know if they want to auto burn to, you know, for the to replace the, the, the remaining money that was not um, found. So let's say 600 million is missing. They found all but three million. Do they have the ability to cover that three million and, do, and to do so? Um, Bloodbound says Binance needs to talk to its community on exit plans because the reality is this happens and the community needs to come to an agreement for when things like this happen. Yeah, and it sounds like that that's what they're doing for the governance. Um, you know, for, for a, a, a cryptocurrency that doesn't follow banking regulations and stuff, they have a governance on on chain governance board and and things so um people are going to be making votes in the blockchain on what to do so that's that's kind of an interesting concept too right but yeah thank thank you hawks fam for the uh the, the bits i appreciate that um <clears throat> every little bit helps um as as many of you uh, you know, on the stream and ha have known uh, and not necessarily the podcast um, <clears throat> where we're discontinuing the InfoSec Education Foundation uh, because I'm not going to be in the state of Washington and the majority of our officers are not in the state of Washington. And so it would either make more sense for me to discontinue it and reestablish it in California if I wanted to, or um, <clears throat> just not do it at all. So, um, I've taken steps. Any any monies that come in through the Twitch or through Patreon are now being routed to the savings account at my Navy Federal. Um, since we no longer have a 
a nonprofit. Um, I decided I still wanted to separate that money somehow and not just put it directly into my bank account. Um, but any remaining monies that is left in the IEF bank account is being um, uh, invoiced, and uh, we're going to be donating the remainder uh, out of that to charity. So, <clears throat> why do all of these exchanges? CPO Parker says, why do all these exchanges seem like banking firms minus all the regulatory oversight that might help when something goes wrong? Uh, CPO Parker, I think you said the quiet part out loud. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, there, there's a reason that banks work the way they work and, uh, you know, track, uh, transactions and have, you know, oversight and backing of a larger organization, uh, like a government or something like that. It's because of exactly what a mature, well, somewhat mature, organization like Binance is now finding out they have a governance board. Now they have apparently an auto burn feature was very much similar to the U S FDIC is what they're wanting. They're wanting the ability to cover hacked funds, uh, insurance, if you will. Blood bound says, I wish I was in the U S I could give some bits from those Twitch ads. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Um, I didn't realize we were still getting ads. I I, I need to probably go and look and and turn those off. I'm not a fan of the ads. If those are still happening, I can definitely turn those off. Bloodbound. Um, DeFi. I I need it to not be regulated. My crypto is hacked. We need regulation. Right, right. Hawks fan. Um, Everybody is okay with, you know, holding this stuff, but then, you know, thinking that they're secure and safe. But, You know, if you've got all this on the front end, like, you know, two factor auth and, you know, token hardware tokens to protect your def, you know, your finance stuff. But then it can just be yanked out through what amounts to the SWIFT network for cryptocurrency being the blockchain. Um, that's that's not good. Or the middleware between two blockchains that, you know, the, the code or the, the glue that is holding these two together. That's a problem. <clears throat> oh, OK. CPO, I will. I will look into that because I'm, I'm almost guaranteeing that I'm, at, I'm not getting anything from the ads because it depends on people um, fixing that. So I, I do. Um, I will fix that CPO because I don't see any need to run ads. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't see a need to run ads if they're not helpful or they're just annoying. So I will turn those off when I um, when I get done streaming tonight. So <clears throat> um, thank 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 a lot of good stuff here. Oh, I downloaded Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm still I'm I'm doing code reviews now at work, so um, I will have some stuff in the near future on on some of that. Um, I actually have an app. I think I'm going to probably take one of the games that I normally play and uh, and download the code for that and and poke around inside of it. Um, Red Team Recon, uh, CHI sent Joseph Healthcare impacted by ransomware attack. Hospitals have issues like that. <clears throat> uh, ransomware file decryptor market. Hmm. Okay. I didn't know that there was a market for file decryptors for ransomware, but uh, it would make sense. Um, yeah. Bank of Brasilia attacked by ransomware demanding 50 Bitcoin. Oh, it's too bad. That's too bad. Um, <clears throat> Uber hack reveals weakness in the human firewall. Uh, you assume that there's a firewall at all, right? Uh, <clears throat> this is interesting. Okay, so a hacker pierced. Eh, I'm not liking the way this is written. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the stream chat, but uh, this is a, a blog post from somebody named John Blatt. Uh, he's john if he is is correct he's like a few days ago hacker pierced uber's security defenses to gain near total control of uber's systems um yeah yeah i don't know <clears throat> oh it's not very long he says strong cybersecurity tools will only take you so far employees are essential to data protection Companies must implement clear data protection policies and regularly train employees on proper security protocols. Reach out if you need with help with this. Ah, okay. So he stopped short of actually saying, "Hey, buy our, buy our piece of shit application, you know, training stuff." Um, <clears throat> you know, my wife uh, just got her doctorate in 
uh, adult education. And um, I just went through annual security training in my office, which annual security. Uh, well, I was, I was trying to figure out if that acronym was ass or not, but uh combination of clickbait and stating the obvious. Yeah. CPO. Um, yeah. Humans are always, we, it's, it's the same thing with the crypto stuff, right? We want to trust. We want to believe that this, you know, that people are not having ill intent. Um, you know, I actually got email at work this week that said, Hey, if you volunteer for this program, you'll get a $500 gift card. And the first thing I thought of was it's October. It's InfoSec Awareness Month, you know, and it was like the 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 subject was like win a five hundred dollar gift card for, and then I couldn't read the rest of it because it was too long of a subject. And then it was like inside, it was like, oh yeah, just sign up and you know click here to sign up for this thing. And I was like, yeah, I'm not clicking that link because it's October. It's InfoSec Awareness Month. If I wanted to run a phishing campaign, this is when I would do it in um, just before the annual security training, which is about to happen. Get lit off. So I posted up into Slack with a screenshot of the uh, the email. I said, good try, red team folks. You're not going to get me that easily. And they're like, no, that's not ours. That's legit. And I was like, oh, OK. Um, maybe I should reach out to this team and go, do you know how fishy this sounds? Uh, how many people actually clicked on this? Because I was like, somebody else said, oh, that's the perfect trigger, isn't it? And I was like, goddamn right. I, I was like, I was I wasn't going to click this shit because I didn't even realize we get spam like that at work, but uh, apparently there was an, uh, um, uh, a marketing group was wanting to get people to help volunteer for something. I didn't even bother reading the whole email, but, um, and you could, you know, get a $500 gift card. So I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. So yeah, I'm not, not looking forward to that. So, um, bloodbound people who put ransomware in hospitals is messed up. Yes. Some people actually have, ethics about you know where they do the ransomware other folks don't do you know what is necessary to um you know they have you know they they just spray and pray and if a hospital or you know a nursing home or something gets uh, caught up in the ransomware then then so be it um it's it's unfortunate that there are some organizations that don't have any kind of ethics when uh, trying to tear down the internet, but uh, I doubt hospitals and or like nursing homes and, you know, child daycares or everything have 50 Bitcoin that they can just, you know, drop off there. So uh, Lady P says our HR department is constantly hiring external services to send welcome messages to everyone in the company that totally look. F- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. And, you know, the problem is how many people actually clicked on those uh, legitimate five hundred dollar gift card things? It's like. Is five hundred dollars worth it? Apparently, it is because I would love to see their metrics on how many people clicked on those things. It's 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 greater than one, I would imagine, and that's really all they need, right? Um, our HR department is constantly hiring external services to send welcome messages to everyone that totally look fishy. We get slaughtered in IT with the "Is this safe?" tickets every stinking time, but at least people are cautious. Yeah. Um, you know, Lady P, at least you're getting people who are asking the question, is this safe? That I would say that's 90 percent of of what, you know, people want to see. And it's cool that you're actually seeing that, um, you know, see asking people if it's safe. Um, you know, uh, it, it's important that people report that stuff. And, you know, it's good that you have a culture where people feel like they can ask that question or report that without, you know, like, Oh my God, you know, without, without reprisals. That's, that's good to see lady P. We don't need them to do fishing. <laughs> the HR does it for us. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say HR is being, are teaching people the wrong thing, but you know, it's, you know, it's, uh, it, it's interesting there. Uh, Bloodbound says it's better than them being annoying than reckless. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, I, I actually looked when I, when I saw it, when I saw the email and it came out and it was like, when $500, I was like, is this spam? Am I getting spam? I don't even advertise who I work for. How the fuck am I getting spam? And then it was like, oh no, this is, this is legitimate. This, this is an at our domain. And I was like, hmm, okay. Um, so I made the joke that I was putting in an email rule so that anything, you know, from 
you know, at our domain gets deleted to the trash. I was like, I fixed the spam filter. And everybody's like, yeah, you fixed email too. And I was like, you damn right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lady P 100% uh, agree on the, the phishing test. Um, I, I wonder how HR would feel about that by, by going to HR and saying, Hey, the way that they're sending these emails is exactly how somebody who would be trying to infiltrate our organization would, would do. Um, <clears throat> it's probably definitely not, I would say definitely not something they're thinking about. Uh, they just want people to be informed. They want people to, you know, be welcomed to the organization in, in, in such a way that, you know, it, it, it garners um, as good a feeling as they can get. So, I mean, there's, I, I you know, <clears throat> Uh, Digital Warhead, would you do open source code reviews? Digital Warhead, yes, I can and would. Um, I my worry is kind of a, a twofold thing. Um, I've I, I, I've talked about this on previous streams. It's like let's say I do wget, you know, little little program, uh, pretty much used everywhere by a ton of things, including things like IoT for doing updates because it's a nice, easy client that you can just shove into a drop bear instance, uh, or um, not drop bear. Um, like the micro Linux thing, they have, you know, an implementation of that for like, you know, small versions of Linux or, uh, embedded systems. You know, you put in a wget library to get updates. Let's say I find during my code review on a very public stream, for instance, a, crushingly bad bug, you know, like the next dirty cow or, uh, you know, heart bleed or whatever for, for W get not saying I would, but let's just say I did now, you know, immediately I'm going to have to go, well, how do I post this up as an issue? Should I post this up as an issue? Oh shit. The, you know, people who are in stream chat right now just saw you know, this vulnerability and Hey, I've pointed it out to people. And now not one person myself knows, but eight other people know that this is a vulnerability. So now the clock is ticking. Maybe it's, maybe it's worth a million dollars on a bug bounty somewhere that I didn't know about. Um, you know, maybe lady P's like, Hey, you know, with this million dollars, I can go and retire in my, my house with my, you know, off the grid, you know, set up and everything. I'm not saying lady P would do that because she's got ethics. I think, um, Bloodbound's doing his hmm face, you know, um, you know, maybe maybe it's got it. Maybe maybe I'm doing something that has a, a legitimate bug bounty behind it. And now I have to figure out how to raise this as an issue to the developers and or, um, you know, race the clock to stop the next dirty cow from happening. And I've publicly disclosed an O day on, on Twitch. Yes, maybe I will get a few more followers on my Twitch stream, which. Hmm. No, wait, uh, that would be bad. Um, but <clears throat> see lady P God damn. lady P you're supposed to be the ethical one here. She says 110% I would, if the money is right. Damn it, lady P you're supposed to be the voice of reason. Two types of people. Those who are honest enough to admit they can be bought and those that deny it. Yeah. I, I, I heard the adage one time that, uh, everybody has a price and Everybody has a price and they will do whatever you want. If you can even, you know, hit that price. There's some that may actually say, well, it'd be $10 million for me to do anything. I bet if you offered him five, depending on what that thing is, you know? Yeah. Great. Now we're just in negotiating terms. Exactly. Lady P. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, there's, there's, there's a ton of things there. So, uh, uh pseudo manuscript, sinkholing interesting at bit oh this is a an article from bitsite so they say at bitsite we do a lot of malware sinkholing and by late 2021 we started registering some dga like domains which is domain generating algorithms uh that not only did not belong to any domain oh they they mentioned it here domain generating algorithms but are also being classified as different types of malware like smoke loader private loader uh, Sokolars, S-O-C-E-L-A-R-S, and Redline. Okay, there you go. Registered more than 50 domains, all in the form A-JM-R 10.com. Uh, oh, okay. So there's some kind of some kind of uh, a random uh, generator there. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
<clears throat> so this is a blog post from BitSite talking about uh, infections or sinkholing of, of, of domains. So they are sitting on some domains to get a better sense of the infection chain and hopefully reach a sample that will communicate with our sinkholes. Okay. Um, here's a link. I'm going to put that in the chat here. <laughs> CPO Parker. I love that joke. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, I, I'll post this up, make sure I keep this link available, but, uh, so there's some discussion there on how they do sinkholing, uh, detections. So uh, obviously when they buy the domains as, as done and, you know, what they're doing is they're buying up domains that, uh, are being randomly generated. Uh, and you know, once the DGAs, uh, get to the point where they're using that domain, uh, they, it obviously goes to wherever BitSite has them located. Got, oh, all right, Beta Wolf, have a good day. Beta Wolf is uh, uh, a little busy. Page not found. Did I do something wrong? Oh, maybe I didn't grab the whole link. That's really weird. I'm not sure why I wouldn't pop the whole thing in there. There we go. Try that again there, uh, <clears throat> CPO Parker. Oh, I think I added the V at the end on that link. My bad. Um, so... But yeah, um, yeah, they're, they're yeah, they are keeping track of those things. Uh, articles description on how pseudo manuscript manuscript is distributed and communicates with C2 matches what we're seeing and filled the gap for some of our unknowns. So manuscript is a uh, what is it? What does it do? I don't see even a link here for it. Uh, specific malware family. OK, so it's some kind of malware. Uh, <clears throat> uses a Wayback Machine page that does not resolve. Uh, they detail how they trace a sample for the specific malware family going from the domains in their traffic to a recently fa uh, dubbed family pseudo by Kaspersky. Okay. So that's a pretty interesting s discussion. Looks like they're going to have part two on this if they don't already. Uh, definitely has some code in here on this. Um, so, but yeah. Talking about messages, conclusions. What's the part? Uh, I wonder what part two is going to be about. Maybe they'll have some more information on that, but it's from BitSite, so uh, go check that out. They're, they don't sponsor the show. It's just some of their Threat Intel, you know, blog posts. They have uh, IOCs for various domains uh, that you can get from a uh, um, uh, virus total. So go grab that. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, Go go check out their site if that's something you're looking for as well. So, uh, <clears throat> well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna end the podcast right now. Uh, I hope everyone who's listening to the podcast uh, is I, I wouldn't say is okay with the new format. It's not a new format, but uh, it's been a bit since we've done a show uh, on the podcast, and I wanted to make sure that uh, you know you're you're getting some news, you're getting some information, you're getting some insight. Uh, you know, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at BreakSec and, and the podcast at BreakSec uh, at Brian Break is my Twitter. Miss Berlin is at InfoSister, I-N-F-O-S-Y-S-T-I-R. Mr. Betcher is at Betcher Pwned, B-O-E-T-T-C-H-E-R-P-W-N-E-D. Uh, you know, uh, we have a Discord, discord.gg forward slash BreakSec. Um, you know, we've got a lot of folks on there, 167 people. We have regular members. We have a lot of fun talking about various things. I figured out how to do spoilers the other day in Discord, and we were talking about the Wheel of Time books that I'm running the audio podcast on, or audio audio books on. Um, but we, you know, talk about other things as well. We have uh, threat intelligence channels. Uh, we are, I do have hard dates now for the recordings for the malware analysis class with the uh, CyberSec Diva. Uh, we're going to do the next session on the uh, 14th. The 28th of October and November 11th, which is Veterans Day. So we're going to be recording the next three sessions of those. Those are on Fridays, so I may do a Thursday stream instead of a Friday stream. Um, but you can go to twitch.tv forward slash breaksec for those things as well. So um, I'm going to go. Thank you all for uh, being on the podcast. If you're Twitch streaming, I'm going to continue doing some stuff here in the next few minutes. So uh, don't, don't run away. Um, but, uh, you know. Have a good weekend. Have a good week. Uh, take care of yourselves because as we're fond of saying, uh, you're the only you you are. And we'll talk soon.